beginning with the NAC registration and pre application process. So before beginning, we know we need to know the fee structure and other financial implications while the institution is applying for the NAC accreditation. So as per the latest fee structure for registration alone, you will be requiring a registration fees of 25,000 rupees plus an 18% GST. This is for the initial registration and submission of the IIQA. So IIQA. IIQA stands for Institutional Information for Quality Assessment, which is the basic document that any institution has to submit. Uh, people are saying I'm not audible. Am I not audible? Can you can someone please tell me whether I'm audible? Some two or three people have typed that I'm not audible. Yes, sir, you are out of me, sir. You are out of me. Oh, fine, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sir, please chat. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. So, on the chat box, if you can type that, I'm audible, it will be really nice, sir, because others can see. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. I got it, I got it. Thank you. So, for the initial registration alone, the institution has to pay rupees 25,000 plus an 18% GST. And once you qualify, for the accreditation process, once NAC says that you are eligible to undergo the process of accreditation, then based on the type of institution that you are, the accreditation fees will be charged as shown here. If you are a university and professional or a professional institution, professional institution, as you know, engineering colleges, medical colleges, dental colleges, and nursing colleges. So if you fall under this category and depending upon the number of departments that your institution has, the assessment and accreditation fees will vary. If you are having less than 10 departments, then your accreditation fee will be 375,000 plus GST. And if your institution is having more than 10 departments, the assessment and accreditation fees will be 750,000 rupees. So of which once you are eligible for accreditation, you have to pay half the amount as an advance amount and the remaining half you have to pay. Once your visit is confirmed 15 days before the visit. And for colleges. For all government granted and all private colleges, if you don't fall under the University or the professional college category. If you are an arts and science college or other type of colleges, say teacher education college or physical education colleges, then you come under the third category, in which case your accreditation fee for multi faculties it is 185,000, for mono faculty it is 125,000, and for teacher education institutes it is 125,000 plus GST. When we say mono faculty, what we mean is only arts college. Where uh, only arts courses, say BA courses, BA kind of courses are, are offered, and uh, they don't have any commerce and science, that is, BCom or BSc is not offered, or they offer only BSc courses and no comm commerce courses are offered. So, such colleges are called as mono faculty, whereas uh, a multi faculty college is a college that is offering programs under the arts stream, the science stream, and the commerce stream. So here, once we are uh, beginning, once we have decided to apply for NAC, the first step that any NAC coordinator or the HOD or every staff member, what I advise them is, please download the following documents which are available on the NAC website. So in this workshop, I will also show you the link and also a live demo on how to download and say uh, how to download these files from the NAC website. So that these files would be handy for us when we are preparing the IAQA as well as for when we are preparing the SSR. So the documents that you need to download from the NAC website are the first one would be the instructions to HEIs. So the 
abbreviation HEI means higher education institution and the fee structure which we just saw the next one will be and in many places while we are submitting the IAQA and the SSR there would be some self declaration and undertakings, undertaking form, undertakings which the head of the institution should give so we have to download and keep those formats also and the user manual for both the I preparing the IAQA and also for the SSR and then in many places we would be submitting the data so while we are submitting the data NAC says that the data should be submitted in a specific format so that also they are enclosing and one important thing that we have to note here is in the data template that they have provided we have to simply enter the data and not change any orders or whichever is already typed there in that format we should not change those data or the headings so same thing applies to the extended profile template and the last one the sop that is the standard operating procedure which is the most important one for data validation and verification here one thing that is to be noted is we have to always check whether you have downloaded the latest revised and updated versions while we are applying for the NAC accreditation. So once we have decided to apply for NAC accreditation, we go to the NAC website as you can see there on the screen. So once you click on that website, it takes us to the home screen of NAC. So this is the home screen of NAC. Once you go there, you can see that assessment and accreditation, a drop down menu is there. So you click on that drop down menu. The drop down menu gives you various subheadings in which the first step we have to verify is the eligibility criteria. That is under what category we are falling and whether we are ready to go for the accreditation process. So once you click on the eligibility criteria, the following screen opens and here as you can see there are three types of institutions universities central state private or deemed to be universities and also institution of national importance so whether your college falls under category one that is the university category or your college falls under the next category that is an autonomous college or whether you are an constituent college or affiliated college so affiliated colleges we mean affiliated to colleges i mean the colleges which are affiliated to universities recognized by the ugc and one more thing that we have to note here is once we say college the colleges which come under a deemed to be university for example if a deemed to be university has four or five institution under its ambit like offering arts and science courses or it may have an engineering college a medical college a dental college pharmacy college if they are having multiple institutions then these institutions cannot go for individual accreditation only the university as a whole can apply for the accreditation process and then the third category is the re-accreditation if you are already accredited then you fall under the third category so having seen this so we are going back to the home screen in which the apply online button is there now once you click on that apply online button this screen appears so as i told you on this screen if you can see the various files that I said which have to be downloaded the various files are given over here the instructions to higher education institutions self declaration undertaking formats there I have highlighted it on your screen the IAQA user manual whether you are coming under the university category or the college category and on the left side you can see the fee structure document so these are the NAC documents which we have to download and keep it for your reference while you are applying for the NAC accreditation. So as we go down the screen, 
just below whatever uh, we have this self study report so again this self study report here i have i highlighted the three categories category 1 2 and 3 which we discussed earlier if you come under the university then you have to download the accreditation manual the revised extended profile template the revised data template and the sop revised manual please note that as of now they have given the updated ones the revised so the latest updation was done on uh, 4th of february as far as the revised manuals for universities is concerned and the next one is the revised manual for autonomous colleges so this latest updation was done on 24th of february and then the revised accreditation manual for affiliated institutions both offering both ug and pg courses so this document was late uh, the latest updation was done on 4th of february so as we move towards the bottom of the screen you can see the apply button so when you keep your mouse on the apply button you can see that it says launch application form so once i see the words launch application forms and i click on apply it takes me to the screen so the screen that appears is it says it is the login screen higher education institution login so if you are already if you have already created a login id then it is fine you can enter your login id and password same way if you are going for the re accreditation process then you can again use the same email id and password here one thing that is to be noted that this email id is valid only for those institutions who have created their login or who have got accredited after 2017 in case your accreditation was done before 2017 <coughs> then you should have created a new login after 2017 the old login which you had been using would not be valid <coughs> so now let us see how to uh, register as a new institution so on this higher education institution login you can see there just below the login tab i have circled it in yellow a new registration button is given so once you click on that new registration button this is the screen that appears so registration for assessment and accreditation it is asking you the various fields in which we have to enter the data now one thing that is to be noted is while we are seeing the instructions to higher education institutions they say that even in the fee structure you would have noticed when you submit this iiqa institutional information for quality assurance they are going to ask you for the basic data only and they say that the processing fees for this is 25000 rupees and in case if your iiqa is rejected on some grounds then you can apply two more times for the same fees now this question arises since they are going to ask you only the basic data on what basis will the rejection happen well the rejection would be mostly due to some typographical errors which may be very uh, what do you call uh, very simple in many cases for example here we have to enter the our institution name in the name of the institution field here as you can see in the next for example the institution which we have taken up for an example is some say x y z college i have given so there as you can see the name of the institution shall be the same exact the spelling that you enter here should be exactly as that is mentioned in the university affiliation letter in case if you are an affiliated institute then your affiliation letter should have the same spelling or if you are a stand alone institution and if you come under the sars that is the statutory regulatory bodies sras that is if you come under <clears throat> if you come under aicte that is all india council for technical education or mca or dca like that if you come under those statutory regulatory bodies then please ensure that the spelling of the institution that you enter here and the spelling that is given over there are matching so once you enter the name of the institution the next field is it is asking you to select what type of higher education institute that you fall under whether it's a stand alone institute or a college so now since we are taking up the example of a college i have selected college 
and the next field that you have to enter is it is asking you to enter the id of the ministry of human resource and development mhrds a i s h e which is the all india survey on higher education so nowadays it is mandatory for all higher education institutions to participate in this all india survey of higher education initiated by the ministry of human resource development so here again we have to ensure that the code that you enter here is of the college or the institution for which the aishe certificate is provided and once again the spelling that is given in this aishe id and the one that you have entered at the top in the name of the institution and the one in your affiliation letter or the approval letter whether it be the ugc's approval letter for a university or the approval from mca dca or for pca or aicte that, that is the regulatory bodies so these spellings should be matching with each other so once you enter your aishe id it will validate its id so once you have done that once that validation is also, so as you can see here it says in case of minor changes please attach the request made to aishe authorities for the required changes that is in case the spelling is a mismatch between your actual spelling and the one that is entered in their website that is aishe website then we have to send a request letter to them and upload that document a copy of that document over here so once you have done this aishe id and validated that id then you will fill up the other fields that is the institution email id and mobile number so whoever is going to handle this accreditation criteria their mobile number or the mobile number of the head of the institution and since we are but since we are going for a new registration as you can see are you previously accredited the default value no is taken so once we have completed this data then we click the proceed if a proceed button that is given at the bottom and i think once again someone is saying that uh, i am not audible uh, every now and then someone or someone or someone is saying that i am audible so can one of you please type on the chat box whether i am audible Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rina Shyam. Thank you, Dr. Mary Anthony. Thank you. So once you click on the proceed screen, from proceed button, the next screen that will appear is the declaration screen. So you have to tick mark that declaration and then enter the captcha and then click the register. button so once you click on the register button it says your profile has been created successfully please check the registered mail to activate your account so now that your profile is created please go and check the email id which you have just entered here on this registration portal so you go to your email id and you would have received a mail from the nac portal this is an automated mail so which says which has given you the link and what you have to do is you have to simply click on this link for activating your registration that is the link which i have highlighted over there so once you click on that link once you click on that link your activation is done you will receive another email giving you the username and the password so once you click on the first email activating your account then within the next few minutes you will be receiving an activated successful email so this is the email which you are going to use to enter into the nac website for applying for the online process so the link is given over there 
and please note down the password this is a system generated password so you have to note down that password and now we go back to the nac screen so when we go into the nac apply online screen the higher education institution login screen is open now that we have already registered and we have our institutional email which you have just provided in your portal registration so enter that email id and the password which we have just received on your email so once you enter that email id password and the captcha and we do the login button this is your nac institutional dashboard this is the dashboard which you will be appearing so on this dashboard as soon as you enter for the first time it is advised that you change your password just like we do for our email accounts you can just click on the change password so because uh, the previous password the original password which you received by email from nac it is a system generated password which will be a combination of ascii characters so you can change the password immediately so once you click on the change password the normal procedure which we do even for our emails the screen comes over there and the password policy is also given over there and once you submit a password conforming to these conditions your password will be updated and as you can see there on the top right of your dashboard it says your password updated successfully and that from the next login you can start using your updated password so now that we have uh, started the campaign of applying for accreditation successfully let's begin with the actual process so on the left side of your dashboard you can see manage iiqa institutional information for quality assurance this is the fundamental first document which we have to sub, uh, submit online to nac so based on the data that we provide on this document only they will verify whether we are eligible for accreditation and on satisfactory compliance we can proceed for the next step so on the screen under manage iiqa you can see that prepare iiqa so once you click on that prepare iiqa button the next screen that opens is the iiqa screen the iiqa screen is now open i have highlighted that so there you see already since we have given some data on your registration portal there on the top you can see that 11.9% the progress tab is given over there and as we start filling up the various data that are required in this iiqa the progress tab will increase and once on successfully completing all the data it will reach 100% it will ask you whether you are ready to submit the filled up iiqa application form so the first field that we have to enter is under the basic eligibility tab you have the name of the higher education institution once again ensure that there are no spelling mistakes so a sample which we have just used i'm using the same sample over here so name of the institution city state actually uh, the city and everything we have done over here date of establishment of the institution and as the basic fundamental eligibility for nac two at least two batches should have graduated so i am entering that also so whatever be your relevant data you can enter that data and at the bottom of the screen we can see that save and next button so once you click that all the data is saved safely so that it is not necessary that you have to complete this entire ia process in a single sitting it is not like that you can save and then you can log out also so that you can continue with the process at a later on stage also the data will be saved there safely so once you click on that save and next button the next screen that appears is it says basic eligibility saved successfully so click on that okay button once you click on that as i told you you can see on the top the progress bar has now increased 
from the initial 11.7 percent now it has come to 31 percent completed and the next tab that is open it is the affiliation compliance tab so now we have to enter the data for this affiliation compliance tab and the data that is required is so since we have chosen as a college we are, we are affiliated to a university and here again it is asking you for the name of the affiliating university the state in which it is located and the next one is is the college offering recognized programs that is in addition to the affiliation for example if you are a professional institution say for example an engineering college then in addition to the affiliation to the state technical university you will also be getting the approval from the corresponding statutory regulatory body that is in the case of engineering ed education institutions it is the all india council for technical education aicte say for example if you are a medical college you would have been affiliated to the corresponding medical university in that state and also you would have the approval from the mci medical council of india and likewise for dental colleges and pharmacy colleges also so the first step first tab the add button gives you the name of the university and then the next step is for the approval letter which you would have obtained from the regulatory body uh, i'm sorry um, mr venkat is saying that i am not audible from the beginning uh, i'm not sure how to communicate that to him because uh, sorry to sorry for the interruption interruption am i audible if uh, one of you can uh, say that i am audible because uh, now you can see mr venkat is saying that i am not audible from the beginning itself can one of uh, you just message mr venkat your voice is audible sir yes, sir you are audible okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thanks okay, as uh, dr reena sham says and uh, my medical college dean is asking me to call him <laughs> so once we have done this you are audible sir uh, thank you sir thank you sir so the next information that we have to fill up is the profile information the head of the institution so here when we are entering this profile information they will always be asking for the information of two contact persons one will by default be the head of the institution whether that be the principal or the director or the dean and the next person because in some cases if the head of the institution is not uh, is not in a they are not able to contact then they will always be asking for an alternate person for contact so the first step would be for the entering the details of the head of the institution so once you have entered those details the next one as i told you it is the alternate faculty again enter the alternate faculty contact details here one thing uh, that we strongly recommend is please use two separate mobile phones because in many cases what happens is although they give the alternate faculty number the alternate faculty name they give the same contact number as that of the principal or one common phone number so please avoid that because it defeats the purpose so after entering the alternate faculty contact details as we move down the screen they are asking you are you a specific type of college now this question is asked because if you are a professional institution coming under the health science and allied institutions or a teacher education institution then you have to answer this question otherwise simply click on no if you don't fall under a nursing college or ayurveda college what i'm saying is as an individual college not as a constitution institution of a deemed university of any other university if you are a separate college alone then you in addition to all the things which you have already filled up all the data you have to click this one as yes in case if you are only an arts and science college or an engineering college then 
the default value will be no. And then the next one is, as we move down, it is asking us whether the institution which you are applying, whether it is recognized by the UGC under 2F and 12B, this, if you are recognized, you will be getting you if government college, if you are a government institution and you are recognized under uh, this 2F and 12B category, then uh, NAC reimburses your assessment and accreditation fees. Once they get the funding from the UGC. So after completing this 2F and 12B, they are asking you whether uh, you are recognized as a college with potential for e uh, excellence or a college of excellence by the UGC in case. And uh, one thing that is to be noted is if you click on the S yes button for all this, then an additional button will appear asking you to upload the relevant document. So one more thing that is to be noted over here is that say, for example, if you are a medical college and if you want to upload your MCA approval letter, and this MC approval uh, will, will be having more than one page, so three or four pages. Then all these pages should be scanned only in PDF format as a single file. You cannot upload multiple files for one field. So one field will accept only one file. So once I am uploading uh, the approval letter for 2F or 12B or the approval letter from the statutory regulatory authority, AACT or MCA or DCA or the UGC. So these letters, approval letters, all these documents for every single field, I can upload only one single file, that too in PDF format. Here again, what we strongly recommend is that please don't take photographs. Instead, scan the document and then upload the document. And as we move down the screen, there you see date of uploading data on the MHRD website. So you have to enter that date also and then you have to upload the document because in the AISHG portal, once you have uploaded the data and submitted, it would have given you a preview screen from which we would have taken the printout. The success screen would have come. So we have to upload that document. And then it says attach certification by the head of the institution, the format. So this format, again, it is given over here. Download prescribed format. Once you click on the button, the word document is downloaded. Or all these prescribed formats are already given in the previous document, which we have already downloaded. You can either take format or you can take it from here. Now, one important thing as far as these prescribed formats go, so please don't change anything which is already given over there unless it is absolutely not applicable to you. Because as I told you, once you change the format, because this format may be changed you even in some cases unintentionally. You would have not noticed that by mistake you would have used the del button or delete button or the backspace button or your on your system and some of the sentences on that prescribed format might be erased. So even that might be a reason for your IAQA to get rejected. So please ensure that once they say a prescribed format, do not change the format, only enter the fields, the name of the institution they would have given there, only enter your relevant answers on those fields and please do not change any already typed formats, already typed headings that they have given over there. Unless it is absolutely not applicable to you. So once you have downloaded that format and the head of the institution has signed it, again, scan it and upload that document. And the last one says, does the institution have any statutory sales? So depending upon uh, the committees that you have in your institution, so check the corresponding boxes and then save and we are moving on to the next page. So the next page is the academic information. So here it is asking you to enter the number of programs offered, UG level, PG level, and in case of uh, medical, Ayurveda colleges, or even arts colleges, all these are given over here. Now, one important thing to be noticed is, as teachers, we are often uh, used to the word 
courses in the place of programs. We say that it's an engineering course. It's a medical course, dental course, nursing course, like that we say colloquially. But once we enter into the field of accreditation, we have to be informed that the course refers to the subjects that a student is studying in a particular program. Whereas program is the name of the degree that he is pursuing, whether it is UG or PG, program is the name of the degree. For example, MBBS is a program, BDS is a program, MDS is a program, BSc nursing is a program, BA English is one program, BA Tamil is one program. Likewise, BE Mechanical is one program, BTEC Computer Science is another program. So let us understand the difference between programs and courses. So while you are entering the data over here, please understand this basic terminologies and start entering the data. And once you have entered the relevant information on this page, As we move down the page, the next field that we have to update is the department that is offering that particular program. So you have to click on that add button and then enter department name. So you will be getting a drop down list and from that drop down list, you can confirm the name of the department. So once you confirm the name of the department, you have to move to the next field, which is the program that is this program is being offered by which department for example a department may be offering two programs say a commerce department it may be offering bcom a regular course and also bcom with honors that is one example where the same department is offering two different programs likewise in the case of engineering a civil engineering department might be offering two programs, BTEC Civil Engineering and MTEC Structural Engineering. Or even in the same PG, they may be offering MTEC Structural Engineering and MTEC Construction Management. So these are some of the examples. And if you are a professional college or a health and science college, you will also come under the statutory regulatory authorities. So you have to select that one also and then click on the add button, which will show you all the data that you have just entered. So as we proceed, we come to the next tab that is the program. So as I told you, you can read over there in case the institution is offering more than one program in a department, then the programs should be identified by entering the specialization. I'm moving back one screen so that the specialization box is seen there. I'm just moving back one slide. So as I go back, you can see there at that bottom, the specialization is given over there. So an example is given. It says in case you have to enter two BSc or two MSc programs in the de same department of physics, then you enter one as BSc and leave the specialization text box blank. And then for the next program, you may enter BSc and on the specialization box, you can type nano science. So in this case, in the typical example given, the Department of Physics is offering two courses. BSc Physics is one course and the next course is BSc Physics with specialization in nano science. And the next point to be noted is the details of the total number of programs that can be included is limited to the number of UGN programs which you have entered previously. So you can't exceed that number. And here you can enter only the UG and PG programs. And if you are a polytechnic college, you cannot be entering it in this. So once we have done that, we have to upload the corresponding document. Here, as I told you, another reason for the IAQA getting rejected is that the uploading document which you are giving over here which is the affiliation status, the self declaration by the head of the institution, the programs that you enter here on this self declaration format should be matching with the programs in the document which you uploaded earlier. 
the affiliation letter which you received from the university it should be matching with that that is and also it should be matching with the programs which you have just entered in case there is a mismatch in these documents then your iiqa would be rejected so while entering this data and while preparing this self declaration report please ensure that there are no mismatches so once we complete this data as i told you in the prescribed format do not exclude any of the clauses so please don't make any changes unless if it is not applicable to you otherwise just stick to that so as we continue it is asking us for the number of teaching staffs non teaching staffs details of the students so you have to enter this data number of teaching staffs it is asking you the number of uh, male staff gender wise it is asking you male female and transgenders so it is we have to enter the data for the teaching staff non teaching staff please ensure that you are entering the current data correctly because we have to whatever be the number that we are entering over here we have to fill up this number along with the details of their names along with the corresponding government provided id proof their aadhar card so please ensure ensure that the numbers that you give here are correct now a question may arise to us once we give the numbers over here and complete the procedure at the time of inspection say after two or three months the inspection is going to happen what is what will happen if there is a mismatch at that time what is what if some of the teachers whom i have shown over here in this count have left the institution or i have some new people who have joined so my now my count is increased then that is very much permitted a minor variation is always permitted as long as it is genuine and you have the supporting documents so that is not an issue to be worried about as long as you have the supporting documents with you so after the uh, same thing applies to the details of the students once you are entering the count please ensure that the count is the exact count number of students inside your campus at the time of applying and the last field over there is asking whether the college is having any academic mou with any foreign institution and in that case again it is asking you to upload that mou now this clause comes here because there may be institutions which are offering dual degree programs or the same program semester abroad wherein a student studies a part of his course in another foreign institution which has been approved through the by an mou through the ugc so in case if any institution is offering such a program then they have to upload the corresponding document over here and the last one is the quality information that is they are asking you whether you are having an iqac that is an internal quality assurance committee so this iqac is mostly established only after the first cycle of accreditation however in many cases many of the institutions even before they go for accreditation they ensure that the quality is being assured by forming an iqac or in some cases they call it with a different name some call it as the quality circles if you are an institution who is having the other uh, quality assurance then you can enter that also and you have to enter the date on which it has been established so enter the details of that quality assurance committee or they may call it as the quality internal quality assurance cell whatever it is and once you have entered that data please click on the save and move on to the next one so quality information saved successfully once we have done with all these <laughs> now your iiqa is complete so the entire institutional information for quality assurance has been completed and you will be making the payment 
and then submitting the IAQA. So while making the payment, NAC does not accept any demand drops or checks. The payment has to be made online. So as you can see on the left side where we have highlighted. So once you have prepared the IAQA and submitted, it will be asking you to make the payment. Once that is done, the NAC would be verifying the details which you have submitted. And as I told you, in case if there is any mismatch between the data which you have provided and the supporting documents which you have uploaded, then NAC will be asking you for the clarifications. So in case any such clarification has been received, then once you click on the left side, as you can see, you have this view IAQA clarifications inside that rectangular red box. You can see that view IAQA clarifications. So if you click on that, it will take you to the tab in which the NAC would have raised the query and you have to answer accordingly. If they are asking for any supporting document, any additional supporting documents, then you have to provide those documents so that the clarifications are being done. And once everything is done, the IAQA would be processed by NAC. And the institution will get the information from NAC regarding the acceptance of the IAQA, following which the most important one, that is the self-study report has to be prepared and submitted. So now, as we proceed for this preparation of the self-study report, which is the most important one, which has to be understood by each and every faculty of the institution. So before we proceed that one important thing that we have to note is once the IAQA has been approved by NAC, then NAC gives you 45 days time to submit your self study report. So it is strongly advised that the institution before you register and apply for the IAQA, you have to first start preparing your SSR, keep everything ready. And then once you are confident that you have reached a stage wherein all the data collection and the supporting documents for the corresponding data are in order. Once that is there, then you go for the IAQA. Because as I told you, that gives you only 45 days time and all these are system generated. So after 45 days, it automatically go, gets lapsed and you have to again apply for the IAQA by paying the registration fees again. So in order to avoid that, it is strongly advised that you prepare all the data and the corresponding supporting documents and keep the self-study report in a ready condition and then go for applying for the IIQA. So this brings us to the end of the first session in which we have in which we have gone through the step by step process of applying for the NAC assessment and accreditation. Here the reason why I have shown you the dashboard is in many of the institutions what happens is that the faculty is in case there is any change in the NAC manual or the templates if there is any revision or updating in many cases the faculty who are preparing the document they are not aware of such revisions in which case their work gets repeated again and again in order to avoid that only i have showed you where in nac website the corresponding documents are available so that every once in a while all the faculties can check on that individually and keep themselves updated on the latest revisions made by the nac